Hello and welcome to Spirit of Nature Art and another video tutorial. And this page has been in my head since the summer, inspired by that lovely rusty tree on the apex of my summer house there, and also this lovely ornament hanging in the hazel tree right outside. I've been trying to find a way of capturing that lovely rusty metallic um, texture that we get on these beautiful garden ornaments. I've got so many of them scattered around the garden. So I'm back in my cutout altered book and this is a four page spread. So I've taken the two centre pages and I've just uh, attached them together with a little bit of serial package liner just to um, cover them and protect them and get them out of the way so that um, I can focus on the back pages. So I'm just starting off with a layer of a, a kind of rusty coloured acrylic paint here, giving it one quick layer, drying it off, flipping those two pages from the middle out of the way and I'm doing exactly the same on the other back page because remember when I cut out those middle pages both of these pages in the background will be seen next to each other. So I find that if I do them together at the same time, each layer together, I get a much more consistent um, uh, result rather than doing one page completely and then moving on to the next page completely. And I want these back, 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 blah, blah, <laughs> background pages to have that kind of feeling of um, a bit of uh, old wood outside in the garden that's had loads of different coats of paint on that's all kind of peeling off. So I'm taking some Vaseline and just dabbing some onto my finger and as you can see I'm just spreading it onto randomly onto little bits of that page. And that Vaseline is gonna act as a resist so that when I now paint the next layer on top, so I'm using a slightly darker brown here, it's not that noticeable on camera, but I'm now painting this over the top of that Vaseline and I'm drying it. And as I dry it, you'll notice that some of those areas dry and the areas where the Vaseline are don't dry because it's resisting that. So I'm taking a baby wipe now and wiping away the area where the Vaseline has prevented that paint from sticking to the page and drying. So you can see again here, so on top of those dabby bits of Vaseline, I've placed another layer of acrylic paint. I'm drying that, and again, you can see the areas there where the paint has dried to the page and the Vaseline has prevented those other areas from drying, so I'm able just to wipe them off. I dry between each layer. And all I'm gonna do now is keep repeating that building up the different layers of colour. So just imagine that every year you'd gone out into the garden, you had a garden uh, bench and each year you painted it a different colour and each year the weather uh, comes and, uh, and you know kind of ages it and bits of it start to peel off and it reveals part of the layer beneath it. So that's the effect I'm going for. So I'm taking the, doing exactly the same. I'm taking my finger, dabbing it in the Vaseline, randomly placing it on the page. And now I'm going in with a different color. I've chosen a dark blue and just going over with a dry brush, spreading that out, getting the heat tool, giving it a dry. And again, you can really see here where the layer dries to the page and the other areas with the Vaseline on don't. And now you can start to see, using these different colours, how this effect starts to build up. Now I would say with this effect that it always goes through that kind of ugly teenager <laughs> kind of stage. Um, there are some art techniques that uh, yeah, do go through that ugly stage and you're thinking, what on earth am I doing? But keep going with it. I'm just doing the same thing over and over here. So I put on some Vaseline. I paint on my next colour. So I'm going for quite a vibrant vibrant sort of turquoise colour here. Once that's painted on, we dry it and then we use a baby wipe to wipe off where the Vaseline has resisted that acrylic paint. And then we start to get this kind of peeled paint look. And every time I do one page, I'm doing the other page. I'm not making you watch all of that because it's quite repetitive, but you can see, here we go. I'm going in here now, doing the same thing on this page and just building it up until I'm happy with it, really. I'm 
starting to get a little bit more specific with where I'm dabbing the Vaseline now because what I want to do is capture those areas where you can see multiple layers of colours underneath. So where I started out quite randomly, now I'm thinking, actually, yeah, I really want to see that bit where you can see the brown and the dark blue and the turquoise all in that one spot. So this is a technique I'd suggest you just play around with on a blank piece of paper and just have some fun with it. layers is knowing when to stop <laughs> and when I look back at this video now this is the point where I wish I'd stopped actually because uh, I don't really like the effect of the color when I put this next uh, this next color on so I'm putting on like a real pale kind of buffy cream color on the top uh, and it really changes everything uh, and I, go, I do go back and change it later on. You'll see how I, uh, how I rectify that. But I, I do wish I hadn't put this colour on. But, you know, hey-ho. Um, <laughs> it's easy enough. All you do is just put another layer on top if you don't like something. That's what I love about mixed media. Um, but we live and learn as we go along. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the beauty of anything, if you don't like it, is just paint over the top or add another layer. So um, this um, I leave at this point and focus on the middle pages and have a think about what I'm doing. So I'm just going to take that protective cover off and you can see I've got these two pages left in the middle now. And I traced, or I put onto tracing paper that pattern from that hanging tree and uh, I'm just wanting to protect the, the middle of the spine here because this bit's going to get quite a lot of uh, wear and tear I suppose and it just felt like it was a little bit wibbly so I've just torn a little bit of page and attached that into the middle before I take that tracing paper and do what we do with tracing paper which is trace over it to get the pattern onto the page. So I'm just folding it in half so that I can make sure I get it directly in the middle and just to make life easier I'm going to use just a little bit of washi tape just to attach it in place so it's not moving around because I have a tendency when I'm doing things like this my piece of paper moves and I can't line it back up again. So I'm just yeah tracing over the top of it to get that pattern on to the page um, and uh, I'm not going to make you <laughs> watch all of it because it's quite a complicated pattern and I did change it a bit as I went along to make sure that the whole centre area didn't need any cutting out. So now that is on, first thing I'm going to do is just taking my little craft knife and my cutting mat and I'm getting rid of that excess around the edge of the circle. And just take your time when you're using a craft knife. This video is sped up, I do not cut this fast. Um, and you can start to see now how as we cut that out, those background pages start to become visible and we can see how important it is that they match. all intents and purposes now that background page looks like one piece so now I'm going to go in and use my craft knife to cut all the little intricate bits out so that we start to see the beautiful tree popping out from that circle in the middle and at this point it was starting to get dark outside so when I finished this I went out into the garden and put the chickens and ducks to bed for the evening and I came back in and I forgot to press record on the camera so there is a bit that gets missed out but I'm going to go back and show you how I did it so what I'm doing now is just protecting those two back pages again so a little bit of um, cereal package I'm just taping that in place and I'm going to go in now and um, paint that tree using just some acrylic paint 
same brown as I use to start with on the background. So putting that protective layer there makes it really easy because I don't have to try and paint each individual leaf separately. I can just paint straight over the top of it. And I'm also doing the back of it as well. So whatever, a bit like the background pages, whatever I do to the front now, I'm going to do to the back. Here we go. And this is where I forgot to press record. So you can see now how I've magically gone from that just bit of brown paint to something that looks like lovely rusty metal. Um, so do not worry, I'm going to put that to the side and I'm going to show you exactly how I did this on this piece of paper. Same, uh, torn out of the same book, so it's exactly the same result, but just imagine this is that cut out tree. <laughs> so I'm painting on the same rusty brown I started with. Then I'm taking some modelling paste and I'm just squishing that onto a blank sheet of card with my palette knife. And I'm taking a dry brush. Oh, I will in a minute. I'm going to take a dry brush and I'm just going to spread some paint over the top of that modelling paste. And I'm going to use this piece of card like a palette. So I am just placing it over the piece of that paper and dabbing it in a few places. So when I dab it, a little bit of that paint and a little bit of that modelling paste transfers to the piece of paper. And we start to build up layers of texture and colour. So I'm drying it in between each kind of dip dab uh, to make sure that layer is set. And then I'm going in with the next colour. So this is salvaged patina, lovely distress uh, paint. And you can see I'm starting to build up that layer of colour. And every time I dab, a little bit of that modelling paste comes off as well. So I'm also building up the texture. And every time it feels like I'm losing a bit of too much modeling paste, I add a little bit more on top so that I can get more texture. And because I want this to look like metal, I'm adding a little bit of antique bronze there. So now I'm getting a little bit of antique bronze and texture adding on there as well. And I just keep going until I'm happy with the result that I've got. It's really very simple. This is a, uh, I think this is a technique that I saw Seth Apter doing or slightly, uh, slightly amended technique that Seth does. He's fantastic at that kind of grungy, rusty look. Um, so uh, you see, I'm going back in now. I wanted that salvaged patina to come out a little bit more. So I'm just adding a bit more of that. So you just play around with it until you're happy with the end result. And this is all I did on that centre spread with the tree. Uh, I promise you, nothing different at all. You see how easy and quick it is to get that lovely, rusty, not just look, but texture as well. And everything I did to the front, I did to the back pages as well. And now we can start to see the problem with that back page. As soon as I put that cream on, look, my tree disappears into the background, doesn't it? So I'm pondering at this point, thinking, how am I going to make my tree pop out from the background? So when I'm pondering, rather than sitting doing nothing, what I like to do is get my hands moving so that it helps my brain and thought process. So um, I've just got some Distress Ink there in Ground Espresso, and I'm just edging that and adding just a, another little kind of bit of colour on there just to bring out that texture even more just adding a little bit because I'm trying to darken that cream that's what I don't like so I'm just kind of squishing a little bit more of that ground espresso over the top still thinking hmm, not sure about this so whilst I'm here I might as well edge the whole pages as well just trying to think about what I'm going to do to help that tree pop out from my pages and in that kind of little bit of time there with my distress ink my my brain was thinking, right, okay, well, maybe I can add some more texture uh, and make this look more like wood by stamping this lovely wood um, stamp over the top, but that didn't really work either. So I decided I was going to add another layer on top. So you can see I just popped a little bit more Vaseline on and I went back to that same lovely turquoise that I'd used earlier on in the process. So I'm just adding another layer on top, same as I did before. Vaseline, drying it, baby wipe to take off the excess. And it completely changes the whole look and feel of that page. So I test it out 
to see what it looks like. And look at the difference between those two pages, how that tree pops out so much better on the left-hand side than the right-hand side. So, uh, so I go back in and do the same on the other side as well. And there we go. That tree now stands out so much better. So I want to add my sentiment now. And um, because I've used Vaseline on this page, I know it's gonna be a little bit sticky and I wanted to do some embossing. So I've just used my um, anti-static pad just to try and get um, that area as clean as possible. And I'm using Versamark uh, embossing ink and my little stamp set here uh, and I'm just using that piece of card to guide me to try and keep it as straight as possible and then I will go in with I've chosen some white embossing ink because I really wanted it to kind of pop out from that page and also just to kind of get that um, sense of you know perhaps a little bit of white paint splattered off onto that kind of piece of wood as you're out in the garden doing something um, so we can see the impact of that Vaseline, that bit of page there has, has kind of got a lot of that embossing powder stuck to it. So um, I'm just taking a very fine paintbrush and just taking away the excess. I'm not taking away all the excess. I still quite want that feeling of this being a little bit, um, you know, rustic and peeled paint. So I carry on with that same technique at the bottom there. I stamp the bottom line first and then go to the top line so I can, don't run out of space. <laughs> um, and again you can see I'm quite happy to leave some of that excess embossing powder there but I don't want it to interfere with the with the letters I want you to still to be able to see what the letters actually say so just heat setting that embossing powder and because I quite like the little splatters that were left I'm just going back on and adding a few more bits of embossing powder just splattering them around Heat setting that as I go. And again, just so enjoyed those splatters starting to kind of get that kind of splattery paint look that I thought, you know what, I want to bring that, really bring that out in the corners. So just some titanium white acrylic paint there, a little tiny bit of water to loosen it up and a fan brush and just turning the page as I do it so I get that directional kind of splat as well. Just looks like someone was painting something nearby that was white and that paint kind of splattered over. And there it is, a finished article that has been in my head since the summer. I am absolutely delighted with it. I hope you like it too. Look how that paper looks like rust. It looks like rusty metal. I am so chuffed with how it's come out and it's such a simple technique. I played around with so many different um, products and in the end I didn't need them, just a bit of modelling paste and that was it. So I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you'll give it a try.